So if the problem is that we have error in all of our measurements, so we can't show a million decimal places, how do we know where to round? What should we round to? So we're gonna properly round our answers to the correct number of significant figures. The final answer can be often written in scientific notation to help alleviate any confusion with those weird zeros sometimes. Um, but the rules for your calculations depend on the type of math you're doing. So we're first going to learn the rules for addition and subtraction, and then next we're going to do some multiplication and division. Now, if I'm honest with you, you're going to multiply and divide way more often than you're going to add and subtract in this class, but we do need to know how to do both because you will use both skills in here. So here are the rules for addition and subtraction you're going to do the math, just like you always would. You're gonna find the original measurement that's the least precise. You're looking for the uh, measurement with the least number of decimal places. And then you're gonna round the answer to the same column as that least precise measurement. And it says there, note, you don't have to worry about sig figs at all for addition and subtraction or just looking at decimal places. So let's say you had three objects that you had the masses of, and we asked you for the total mass. So if you add up that 18.254, 2.134, and 3.20, uh, throw that in your calculator. Your calculator is going to spit out 23. 588 grams. Right, so I'll put here, like, here's your calculator answer. But what your calculator doesn't know is that this isn't a theoretical situation that you might learn about in math class where everything's perfect and there's no real life context. Um, what we have a situation here that you could see off in green on the side there, it says, just for emphasis, highlight the uncertain digit in the measurements on this page. Do you see why we had to round it? So that first mass, we were using a measuring tool that was guessing on the thousandths place. This guy also, we were guessing on the thousandths place. But this guy, we were guessing on the hundredths place. So it's a little misleading to have our answer reported with a thousandths place when one of the measurements we used to make that only went out to the hundredths place. And we don't even know that hundredths place for sure. So how on earth can we write our answer with three decimal places? It's just overstating what we know for sure. So what we're going to do is round our answer to the same column as the least precise measurement. You're looking for the least number of decimal places. So this guy has three decimal places, right? Not three sig figs, three decimal places, as does this guy. And this one only has two decimal places. So what that means is we are going to keep two decimal places, and then we're going to chop our answer after that. Then you're going to follow your, I don't know, third grade rounding rules. If the number behind that chopping block is a five or above, it's going to nudge this number right in front of the chopping block up. If the number behind the chopping block is a zero through four, then the number in front of the chopping block, you would just leave alone. So this guy, our 23.588, is going to turn into a 23.59 grams. Here, we are not overstating what we know because our worst measurement went out to that hundredth place, and then that's as far as we're reporting our answer as well. So we're not overstating what we really measured. Well, what if we wanted to take our answer and switch it into scientific notation? 
When you are taking answers and asked to just switch the format in which you're displaying them, so going back and forth between scientific notation and regular standard format numbers, when you're asked to do that, we want to make sure we keep sig figs the same when we flip numbers in and out of scientific notation. So here's where some sig fig counting might come in. If I asked you how many sig figs does the number 23.59 have, we would say it has four sig figs, right? All numbers, the two, the three, the five, the nine count. So when we go to put it in scientific notation, we need to make sure that that guy would have four sig figs as well. So if we put that guy in scientific notation, we would say 2.359 times 10 to the positive first. Let's try another addition subtraction one. What if we had a measurement where we had one volume, 19.06 milliliters, and we removed 4.1 milliliters, and we want to know how much is left over? Well, if you throw that guy in your calculator, your calculator is going to say 14.96 milliliters. But again, your calculator doesn't know that there's some context there, that your measurements have some error. In that first measurement, we're not sure about the sixth in the hundredths place, but this guy, we're not really sure about the tenths place. So how could we possibly have an answer with the hundredths place if one of the measurements we used to make it, we were guessing on the tenths place? It's overstating what we know. So we need to count decimal places, not sig figs, decimal places. So we would say, well, this guy has two decimal places. This guy has one decimal place. And then you're going to make your answer have the same number of decimal places as your worst measurement does. So our worst measurement only has one decimal place. So that means I'm going to keep this one and chop off the rest. The number behind our chopping block, if it's a five and up, it's gonna nudge the number in front of it. Well, the number in front of it's a nine, and if we have to nudge that up, we need to uh, nudge that guy up to a 10, we're gonna have like a double bump situation. And so this guy would have to turn into a 15. But, we can't say just 15 and that's all because remember we wanted our answer to have one decimal place to match our worst measurement. So we can't just say 15, we have to say 15.0. Now, if I ask you to take that number and take that answer and put it in scientific notation, here's where you'd count some sig figs. The number 15.0 has three sig figs. That zero is a right, right zero. So if we wanted to switch that guy into scientific notation, we have to keep three sig figs. So I'm going to keep the one, the five, and the zero. I can't drop that zero or else my sig figs will change. So 1.50 times 10 to the first milliliters.